Call of Duty have released their Season 2 roadmap and there's plenty of surprises on there whether you're interested in Warzone or multiplayer. So in this video I'm going to go through everything you need to know, give you my reactions to it because there's a lot of positive stuff in there but there's also some kind of negative stuff but we'll get onto that later. If you like the video don't forget to like and subscribe but we've got a lot to get through so let's get started. So this is the roadmap but we're going to go through each bit kind of individually. Um, the whole update is launching on February 15th. They've said 9am PT. That means it's about five o'clock I think in the UK. So that's Wednesday afternoon next week. That's when all of this is going to be going live. But there is some stuff that's actually going to be in season and I'll point that out as we go. So first of all, let's talk about Warzone. Um, the big new thing is obviously the new map. We're getting Ashika Island. This is a map made by High Moon Studios. They're the people who made Fortune's Keep. So I'm kind of excited about this map. Really hoping it's going to be good. It's kind of Japanese Pacific Island kind of setting. Um, to me, the color palette and everything like that looks a little bit like Caldera. I know that's probably a sort of worrying thing to say, but it looks a bit like that. And obviously the big feature is Castle in the middle. They did do a big blog kind of going through every single location. So we're not going to worry about that today. Let's talk about some of the new things maybe that they're talking about obviously we're getting resurgence that's kind of what the mode's made for so that mode that we used to play on rebirth island and then on fortune's keep as well that's coming back it sounds like it is very similar one really awesome thing is that there's going to be solos duos trios and quads at launch so you're not going to like have to be in a trio or something like that they did say there'll be regular playlist updates throughout the season so i wouldn't expect that to last very long but at the beginning we will have all of those different modes which is nice um, one new feature is Restore Honor, which is going to be there from the beginning. This is something where if you die in Resurgence, so just in Resurgence mode, you're going to drop a dog tag once per match. So not every time you die, just the first time. That can be picked up by you when you come back or by any of your squad mates. And when you pick it up, you'll get a bit of cash as well as a single UAV ping that marks enemies like a normal UAV ping does, but also supply boxes. So it's kind of if you drop back in, you're about to pick it up, see where the enemies are nearby, see where some boxes are so you can choose whether you want to get in a fight, try and get your stuff back maybe, or you want to go straight for the supply boxes. Or obviously your squad mates could do it so they get a bit of a ping so they've got an idea of where everyone is. That's something in Resurgence, you used to get a ping every time you kill an enemy, so I'm not sure if that's being taken away or how that's going to work. Let me know in the comments if you know. Is it going to take away the ping from when you kill enemies? No idea. Anyway, there's also some new, there's a new contract and a new event. The contract, it says, is in season, so it's not going to come straight away. I'd expect to wait a couple of weeks. For that, it's going to be something where you can reclaim a stolen vehicle, either an SUV or a patrol boat, and after you accept the contract, it will tell you where that is. And then as soon as you go to that area, there's going to be some AI, some bots about, and we'll talk about the bots a little bit more in a second. You have to kill all of the forces guarding the vehicle, pick up the key that one of them drops, and then get that vehicle to a drop-off point. So it sounds like quite an involved contract, maybe quite a tricky contract, um, especially if the map's quite small. Any land vehicles, that might be kind of tough. But it says that Shadow Company have been rumoured to have their hands on some powerful hardware ready to repel operators venturing onto the aisle. I kind of expect there to be an attack helicopter. Like there was in DMZ in the um, cargo mission, the stolen cargo mission, I'm guessing it'll be something very similar to that where as soon as you get in that vehicle, an attack helicopter will chase you until you get to the drop-off point. Not really sure what you're going to get. It says cash and other in-match rewards. There's also going to be a new event, Data Heist. Again, this is in season. This isn't at the very beginning. Free uplink stations will come online and you can go and kind of download intel from them. You activate them and then AI will start attacking you. The more AI you kill, the quicker it will go. If you do the first one, apparently you get XP, cash and a random piece of tactical equipment. That sounds like a kind of terrible reward. But then apparently if you do two or three, you can get things like a random kill streak or even an advanced UAV. So if you do one of them, you get kind of rubbish rewards. If you manage to do two or three, you get something that's kind of okay. I'm not sure how many people are going to be doing this. That doesn't sound that amazing. One kind of interesting thing is enemies can stop you from doing it just by getting close to it or using a DDoS. The DDoS seems to pause the progress for a bit. Again, not sure if anyone's going to bring in a DDoS just for the sake of that. But, you know, it's kind of an interesting little interaction. I like that. They also talked about there being lots of different changes to Warzone 2 that we've already been through. So the idea that the backpack's going to change, you're going to be able to customize your perk packages, all of that kind of stuff. Loadouts are going to change, Gulag's going to go to 1v1. All of that stuff's already been covered. Another thing that's coming in season is the redeploy drones. So you might remember we had redeploy balloons in Warzone 1. 
Redeployed drones are going to be in Warzone 2, but just in Resurgence, apparently. So just on the new map, by the sounds of it. Instead of a balloon, it's a drone. Now, this is kind of interesting because the drone is going to go to a location and then you can go up to it and activate it to fire a cable up to it or drop a cable down. Not sure quite which way that's going to work. And then use it like a redeploy balloon. So you can shoot up there and then fly off. Now, as the gas comes in, rather than you just losing the ability to use those drones, I need to stop thinking that it's balloons, the drones will actually move further into the map. And that's kind of interesting. That's a kind of cool idea. Although it would be a bit annoying if you're planning on using one to get out and then the gas overtakes it and it just like flies away from you. Also interesting, apparently you can shoot them down with rocket launchers and things like that and then they'll be gone. You can't pay for them to be repaired. Instead, eventually just new ones will spawn in. So kind of interesting, a little bit less player agency in it. I'm not sure how I feel about it. I did really like the redeploy balloons in Warzone 1, but it was frustrating when like a whole team would land on your head. So we'll see how it goes. I think it sounds like it could be quite cool. This is something I'm pretty sure people are gonna hate. People are gonna get angry about this. There's a new AI bot called the Russia, and apparently it will not have much health or armor, but it's going to have increased agility and a deadly short sword and a pistol and mini smoke bombs. So it sounds like they're gonna sprint towards you and try and stab you. Anyone who's been hit by the AI in this, who's been meleeed in it, you know, maybe one hiding behind a door, will know how hard they hit already. If this thing's got a short sword, I imagine it's going to down you super quickly. So it's going to throw smoke down, then rush forwards, and then down you very quickly. Apparently, there's no stronghold or anything like that on the new map, so it's just going to be during certain conditions like data heist, and I guess like the new contract where you're going to get the vehicles. But if they introduce these in strongholds and stuff in the main map, that's going to be a problem. So yeah, at the moment it's saying just in resurgence mode, just during things like data heist, but I don't think people are going to like them. I do wonder if we're going to see them in DMZ. I would assume so that they're going to be in DMZ. They sound like they're going to be a real problem and not necessarily that much fun to fight against. Then it also says something that I'm obviously super excited about. Discover the secrets of Ashika Island. So it sounds like there's going to be lots of new Easter eggs, things like that. High Moon Studios launched Fortune's Keep with like five proper Easter eggs in them, which was really, really exciting. It says there that Sheik Island has its own secrets for operators to uncover. Use all of your senses, so it sounds like you're going to be listening out for stuff as well, and be curious during resurgence matches, and you may just stumble upon some legendary supply boxes or other items that can help you towards victory. So that's obviously super exciting to me. Can't wait to see what that involves. Then it talks a little bit about how DMZ is going to be on there. It says, you know, DMZ is going to have its reset, losing all insured weapon slots and everything. There's a new faction. And a really interesting thing there where it says it will add additional intrigue alongside a refresh of familiar missions and their rewards. That makes it sound like a refresh of the rewards. Sounds like we're maybe not getting all new rewards. Maybe some are going to stay, some are going to be swapped around, some are going to be updated. And it does say granting operators new permanent art knocks like operator skins and weapon blueprints. Not sure if that's just going to be for the crown faction or whether there's going to be new, better rewards added for all of the other missions too. Here's hoping, so it's going to be kind of annoying grinding out a lot of the same missions for a lot of the same rewards. That'd be kind of tedious. Then it does say as well, you can complete missions in Almasra, Building 21 if you've got the key card, and Ashika Island. The new map will be central to the experience's continued narrative. I don't think there's been that much of a narrative, other than the notes. The notes have had kind of interesting backstories. Um, it'll be interesting to see whether that's continued at all. But the main missions don't seem to have that much of a story to them at all. And then it says other new features like boss hideouts. Boss hideout sounds kind of cool. Not really much information on that. But we do have a new boss. This is kind of replacing the Juggernaut. So this is how you're going to get weapon cases. It's been confirmed. The Bomb Maker. So he's going to be somewhere on a Shiko Island. He holds the weapon case. So you need to defeat him to get it and extract to get the new things. It also says Almazra and Building 21's weapon cases are going to remain the same. So if you've already got all of those rewards, you're kind of out of luck. You can't get them again. But if you missed them in Season 1, don't worry, you're still going to be able to get them. And there is actually a pretty cool operator from the Almasra ones, the Gas Mask one. I quite like that. So you'll still be able to get that even in Season 2. Um, we'll probably do some streams where we help people get those, I imagine. I'm sure there'll be some sort of missions where you have to do them. Now, also in Almasra, there's some new points of interest. So obviously you've got Afghan from Modern Warfare 2. You've got this map coming back. We've got a plane crash in the middle of Satik Caves. That's added to it, which is kind of cool. Interesting little bit here where it says, elsewhere enemy reinforcements have redacted, resulting in a subterranean redacted between multiple points of interest in the north. Also, we're confirming reports of redacted being recommissioned and ready for passengers on the main redacted in the region. 
that sounds to me like a metro. So that sounds to me like maybe there's going to be some new underground stuff going on. Maybe there's going to be a train tunnel, something like that. Some of the notes talk about people smuggling stuff through tunnels. So that would be really interesting. I think that's what's going to happen. We're going to get some tunnels under the map. That sounds very cool. Now, let's get on to some of the more negative stuff. Because all of that, to be honest, sounds good. Like, the stuff coming to Warzone DMZ, super excited about the new map, super excited that we're getting some new secret areas for our mouse work. That sounds like that's going to be a lot of fun. Obviously, I'll be streaming as soon as this goes live and, you know, trying to do absolutely everything, trying to do new DMZ missions, new weapon cases, new Easter eggs on the new map, looking around our mouse work for these tunnels. It's going to be an absolutely awesome stream. I can't wait. Make sure you're here on YouTube, turn your notifications on, subscribe, get ready for that. So all of that stuff sounds pretty good to me then we get on to the modern warfare 2 stuff the multiplayer stuff so first of all there's ranked play coming treyarch are doing that to be honest i haven't got engaged in ranked play at all for the last few games so i don't care about that at all but i'm sure for people who do care about it, that's pretty cool but then we get on to the stuff that's maybe a little bit less exciting it says four maps for multiplayer at launch and i'm pretty sure on twitter at some point over the last few months they said there's going to be all new maps like all new content because people were sick of everything just being remakes you know for season one we got like shipment and shoot house which you know we've had in a lot of different games that's kind of tedious well for multiplayer in season two you're getting dome which is a map that we've had in lots of other call of duty games and you know by looks of it it's just a zyre observatory it's just a bit of the war zone map so that's not really interesting. But don't worry, we're getting more maps. We're also getting Zyra Observatory, which is a bit of the Warzone map that you're now going to be able to play in Ground War. They call it a battle map. That means it'll be available in Ground War and Invasion, I guess. So, you know, great. And then we're getting Al Malik International, which is another bit of the Warzone map that now you're going to get in Ground War and Invasion. I guess for people who just play Ground War and Invasion and don't play Warzone DMZ, that could be kind of interesting. You know, it's a new space for them. I personally don't know anyone that still plays Ground War and Invasion. I'm sure there's lots of people who do, just not people that I play with at the moment. And then we're also getting Voltaire's Museum that they haven't even put a screenshot with for some reason. But the museum, which is a map that was in a beta, it was quite a fun map. I quite liked it. Some people hated it because it's big and blocky, but I thought it was quite cool. But that's coming to the game as well. So in actual fact, we're not getting any new maps. We're just getting a remake of a map and then a few maps that are kind of repurposed from Warzone and then we're getting a map that was in the beta. Um, so yeah, I'm a bit disappointed by that. I think that's a little bit lame. I would like to see some more multiplayer maps. None of this is making me think, oh wow, I need to load up multiplayer again. I need to get involved in that again. But in more positive news, there's some new modes. We knew we were getting infected already. So infected sounds good, 18 players. That'll be a lot of fun. I'm sure that'll be absolutely awesome. We're getting Gun Game. I really enjoy Gun Game. We already knew about that. Then we're getting a couple of things that I didn't know about. We're getting Grind. So that's where it's kind of kill confirmed, but you can pick up loads of dog tags. Then you have to bank them in order for it to work. So that sounds cool. We're getting Hardcore. So people didn't like the whole tier one thing, but we're getting proper version of Hardcore back. Good for people who like that. We're getting Drop Zone. My wife loves Drop Zone. So she'll be happy to hear that we're getting that, but that's in season. That's not straight away. Then we're getting something which I'm really excited about, All or Nothing. I don't actually know about this mode. I don't know if this was in a previous game, but it sounds really cool to me. So you start with only throwing knives and a pistol with no ammo, and you have to be the first to get 20 kills. Every time you get a kill, you get perks, and the first one is Scavenger, so that lets you pick up some ammo so you can start using your pistol after you get your first kill so your first kill has to be a throwing knives or melee that sounds a lot of fun i'm really excited about that i'm definitely going to play that i'm sure we'll have some community games that sounds awesome we're also getting one in the chamber i really like one in the chamber you know it's where you get like the magnum and you get one shot of it and if you get a kill then you get another bullet if you don't get a kill if you miss then you've just got to melee people that's really cool too so i like that then there's extra information. We're getting the next raid. So that's going to be coming mid-season. So I'd expect it in a month or so. So sometime in March, we're going to get that. Um, judging from the picture, a little bit disappointed that it looks like we're staying in the same location. Looks like we're staying in that nuclear bunker. More tunnels. I mean, sure, the first raid was really fun. I enjoyed it. I had a really good time doing it and completing it on veteran and all of that sort of stuff. But I was kind of hoping that each raid was going to be like a really different kind of experience, a really different kind of location. This looks a little bit like it's more of the same. I mean, it's not flooded, so that's good. Maybe it'll be a bit different. But yeah, kind of a shame that it doesn't look more different. Um, it says Atomgrad was just the beginning. 
And then there's also um, some new operators and stuff like that. I've got Ronin coming back. I know lots of people like them. Name Gear, who I play with a lot, really likes him. We're getting some new weapons. Some of the new weapons look okay. We're getting the Hemlock Assault Rifle, which looks fine. I mean, I don't know. Is I don't know anything about guns. Is that good? It looks like all of the other guns to me. Um, we're getting a shotgun. It's a new semi-automatic shotgun. Fine. I feel like we've already got some semi-automatic shotguns, and they're okay. We're getting the dual Kadachis. Again, that's a fun one to use. It does talk about it having a bit more lunge, a bit more forward motion, which is always a little bit scary that it might be completely broken and have people, you know, like flying towards using them. But I like melee weapons. I think that's fun. So that's fine. The crossbow's coming back. That says launch window. So it sounds like it's not coming right at the very beginning. Um, but it says that you'll be able to get in the store bundle or you can complete the Path of the Ronin event challenges. So there's going to be this Path of the Ronin event that's alluded to on the roadmap where I guess... Just like we used to have in Warzone 1, there'll be a set of challenges. You go around, complete them all. If you manage to complete all of them, you unlock the crossbow. That's pretty cool. I'll look forward to doing those. That's good. And it does talk about having unique ammunition types, so that's exciting as well. I imagine we'll get the explosive ones and the thermite ones and stuff like that. Also, normal bolts are undetected by trophy systems and recoverable, so a reason to use the normal bolts, which is kind of cool. And then in mid-season, there's going to be a new marksman rifle, which is the Tempest Torrent, and a new lethal equipment piece, the Shuriken. So that's kind of cool. We're going to have a new thing like throwing stars to throw. I guess it'll just be like throwing knives but you know that's kind of cool i like the idea of that so that's good nothing about weapon vaults which is kind of interesting we had that one for the pre-order and then we've got nothing for two seasons now which kind of surprises me i thought that was going to be a big thing they were going to push but nothing about that also another thing that sounds really awesome is that we're getting jet skis now it talks about the fact that this is going to be in ashika island and our Mazwa. Jet skis are a lot of fun. I really like the boats in Warzone at the moment. I use them in DMZ quite a lot. I enjoy them. So the idea of getting something that's super fast, but maybe doesn't quite have, you know, the armor of any of the other ones, that sounds really cool. So I'm excited about that and seeing it go through tunnels and stuff sounds like a lot of fun. I'm sure there'll be some fun DMZ missions revolving around that. There's Ronin, there's a new operator. Then it talks about the fact, you know, Sony are getting a new um, combat pack, which looks kind of cool. So if you've got a PlayStation Plus, you can get that skin. That's cool. Um, Prestige, obviously your levels will go up to 500 now instead of 250. Um, and then I think that's better. Oh, and the other big thing, combat records and leaderboards are going to be coming on. So leaderboards for multiplayer are coming on and combat records, your stats for Warzone are going to be coming online, but it's not going to include any statistics from season one. So just starting February 15th, it will start tracking your kills, your deaths, your wins, your time played, all of that stuff means it's a little bit weird because like time played won't count all of the time you play in season one for a lot of people i imagine that will be a huge amount of time and obviously people who have got loads of wins already it's only going to start counting from then which you know kind of sucks for me i don't mind too much i did have a couple of weeks of really good games at the beginning of warzone but um you know maybe we'll be able to do well now i'd really like to make sure that my kill death is like getting up there it used to be like 1.1 1.2 it'd be really nice if i could get it up to like 1.5 or something like that we'll see how it goes Anyway, that's everything. Thank you so much for watching all the way to this point of it. Obviously, I'm going to be streaming this all as soon as it goes live. Super excited. If there's any big updates, I'll make more videos. Thank you especially to all of my YouTube Elite members. So that is Fogger, Versatility, Killer Queen 2891 and a Noisy Cricket. They've become members on YouTube channel. If you want to become a member, you can do it from as little as $1.99 a month. Just press the join button underneath this video. So thank you very much for watching. Go watch one of my other videos and I'll see you soon. Goodbye.